You asked for it, so we're here on the dyno with VMP's Track Attack. This is a 2017 Mustang GT. We're gonna be testing all of the commonly available Coyote intake manifolds to see which makes the most horsepower and which is the best bang for the buck. We've already got the 2018 Mustang intake manifold installed. I'm gonna hop in the car and make a pull. Everybody's been talking about the 2018 intake manifold and it performs really well, especially given the costs. So we started out with that intake first. That gives us a good reference point to start with for all the testing. We're making 457 with the 2018 intake manifold. The horsepower is varying a little bit depending on how much the engine is heat soaked, but I'm pretty confident now we've got a good baseline and some good reference points uh, to compare from when we switch to the other intake manifolds. Since we're already on the 2018 intake manifold, the first thing we're gonna do is test the ported version. Donnie just got done swapping the 2018 ported intake manifold on. Got all our data logs going. Better make a hit. We pretty much saw what we expected. The porting does help make a little bit more horsepower on the 18 manifold, which already produces great numbers. We're gonna go to a GT350 manifold and see how that does in comparison. I think that's what a lot of people wanna know. Is spending the money on the GT350 manifold worth it or will the 18 intake manifold get the job done? We're gonna find out here in a second. We've now tested three different intake manifold combinations. I've got all the data on my computer. I can tell you they're all extremely close. 18 and GT350. And we had a ported 18 mixed in there as well. We're gonna keep swapping intake manifolds. And once we have enough data, we should really have uh, kind of the full story on what all the differences are and the trends are between the different intake manifolds. Right now though, it's a, it's a very, very close race. Now we've got the Boss intake swapped on here. You can see it sits quite a bit higher. This was originally designed for an 11 to 14 car, and of course it fits the 15 up cars, but it's very tight to the hood. We've got an aftermarket hood on this car, you may end up having to use drop motor mounts or an aftermarket hood with some of these intakes like the Boss and the Cobra Jet. I'm pretty sure it's hitting in the back. It makes for a badass picture though. Boss intake is probably one of the original Coyote upgrades. It came out on the 2012 Boss, and it sacrificed some low-end torque in favor of high-end horsepower. I think the Boss intake is still pretty popular because of how it looks, and it's not that expensive. You can still use your stock throttle body, whereas, of course, the Cobra Jet intake requires an aftermarket throttle body, an adapter harness, and a unique cold air designed specifically for that intake. All the way to 
7,500 RPM again. And the boss is right there with everything else we've tested so far today. You see, it's definitely got one of the lower mid-range torque numbers, but it's not something you're going to notice at the track. At least not if you're revving the Coyote out to where you, you should be, which in my opinion is at least 7,500 RPM. All right, I'm back in the driver's seat again. This time we're throwing a little bit of a wild card into the test in the form of a truck manifold. Apparently some people have talked about this online and um, they're curious how much uh, torquier the truck intake manifold is. We're inter just interested to see if there's a trade-off um, as far as more torque. It makes significantly more bottom end torque. Um, you know, something like 20 foot pounds more at 4,000 to 4,500 RPM. It actually makes almost the same peak. It actually gets up there to about 450 at the wheel, but it just nose dives. It drops like a rock by 7,500, it's down to around 400 rear wheel horsepower. So that's just not gonna give you the big, broad power curve that you need to go fast at the track. E even the little bit of torque is gonna be offset by that massive horsepower loss. On this pull, we're gonna be running the stock 15 to 17 GT intake manifold. This one's just totally stock, no porting or anything. This is gonna give us a good baseline to compare against all the other intake manifolds. That stock 15 to 17 intake is a lot like the truck intake. It makes some good torque down low, but it just noses over at high RPM. At 6,500 RPM, it's done. Well, we've got something a little wacky going on under the hood. We've installed the Cobra Jet intake, and the cold air we have here is for 11 to 14, so, it, um, it's actually sticking out from, uh, from under the engine bay right now, but it's gonna do what we needed to do for dyno testing. The Cobra Jet intake was purpose built for the naturally aspirated Cobra Jet, and it fits all Coyotes. It's typically been kind of the king of the hill as far as intake manifolds. Um, low end torque is just not, uh, not what it was designed for. It was designed for making power up at 7,000 or 8,000 8, RPM. Uh, when I tested the Cobra Jet intake on my GT350 uh, about a year and a half ago, it actually made seven rear wheel horsepower more than the GT350 manifold consistently. Now there's quite a few more intake offerings, of course, with the 18 intake manifold out, so it's gonna be interesting to see how the Cobra Jet does. I suspect it will still be king of the hill, though. I mean, low end torque is nothing to be excited about, but that top end charge is awesome. This is no doubt the best run we've had of the day. All right, I'm back in the car for the final pull. I just wanted to get one more piece of data before we come up with the final results. 
from this intake manifold shootout. Now really what we're trying to evaluate here is not only what performs the best, but what's going to be most cost effective. After having gone through the process of making 20 plus dyno pulls with several different intakes, I wanted to make sure the data made sense, so I'm retesting the 2018 intake manifold. And, uh, and that test was still very favorable after swapping through what, five or six different intakes, going back to the 2018 again, the numbers are still awesome. The first intake that we ran was the 2018 intake manifold. That's been a very popular upgrade. People are seeing pretty darn big gains from it. It actually made 457 rear wheel horsepower during our testing. Now, it peaked at just over 7,000 RPM. It's much better than the factory intake in the sense that it does not fall off at high RPM. It maintains a broader power band. I don't wanna use the word flatter because there's actually intakes that maintain a flatter power band, but it definitely does a much better job than the stock intake. So the next thing we tested was a CNC ported 2018 intake manifold. That intake manifold did really good. It picked up power everywhere throughout the curve and ended up making 462 rear wheel horsepower. It, you know, this 2018 intake manifold continues to be a great performer and for the cost, it really can't be beat. I think that's gonna be the big thing that comes out of this story is that the 2018 intake manifold just performs really well. And uh, sorry to cut to the chase, but the data is what the data is. However, we did all this dyno testing and we've also got numbers from the GT350 manifold, which has been very popular with the S550s the Boss 302 manifold, that was kind of the old standby, and of course the CJ manifold, which has been traditionally the best performing intake manifold, and it really still is. The GT350 manifold makes a good peak number. It made 457 rear horsepower as well. The only difference that I can really see in the data is between about 5,000 RPM and 6,000 RPM, the torque is not as strong. It's probably down about five to 10 horsepower in this very narrow RPM range. So next was the Boss 302 manifold. This manifold came on the scene in 2012 and it was instantly a very popular upgrade for regular Mustang GTs. And people still use it on the S550 today. You know, I was thinking about it and the Boss had CNC ported heads and a higher lift exhaust cam but it really never made a whole lot more horsepower than the Mustang GT. You know, it was rated higher, they would always dyno a little bit higher, but it was not night and day. The real benefit to the Boss 302 intake manifold was that it would carry the power all the way out to 7,500 RPM. The Boss 302 had the highest uh, red line we'd ever seen at the time from the factory of 7,500 RPM, and it had no problem going all the way to 7,500 and not falling off very much at all. So that's where that flatness to the power curve comes in. And, and by the way, did I mention the Boss 302 made 450 rear wheel horsepower. So when you look at the curve, it's really not a bad curve, especially compared to the stock stuff, but it's also not a real peaky intake manifold. Doesn't get you that crazy top end number like the 2018 manifold or the GT350 or the CJ manifold. We actually tested a couple different stock manifolds, a truck manifold and the Mustang GT manifold. They made significantly more bottom end torque. I'm only showing one graph here because they were so close, it wasn't really worth mentioning uh, all the graphs. Um, definitely you're gonna notice more part throttle torque, more low end torque, but once you get above about 4,500 RPM, all the intake manifolds are pretty darn similar on torque. The big thing with the stock intake manifolds, I should say the stock truck and Mustang GT intake manifolds previous to 2018, is that they fall off hard after 6,500 RPM. You gotta figure that a stock Mustang GT rev limiter is at 68, so the intake manifold was really never designed to go very far. And by 7,500 RPM, you're getting to be down um, as much as 40 to 50 rear wheel horsepower, which just isn't acceptable in a racing environment. 
our final intake manifold test is the Cobra Jet intake manifold. I've tested this intake before and it is still pretty darn bad to the bone. It comes on really strong at 6500 and holds that all the way out to 7500. I mean, you just can't uh, you can't complain about that. It's pricey. It's very pricey, but it does perform really well. I will say, looking at all the lines on the graph, the low end torque is trending pretty much lower than everything else. That's the trade off for that very good top end performance. If you've got the money to spend and you don't mind all the little tweaks that are required on S550, like drop motor mounts and everything, then it'll get the job done really, really well. You know, at the end of the day, I will tell you that this intake manifold test has taught me that we have a plethora of great intake manifold options for the Coyote. And these intake manifold options are all factory offerings. They're abundant, they fit with OEM fit and finish. In the case of the 2018 intake manifold and the GT350 intake manifold, you can retain the factory CMCVs which means better drivability, better fuel economy, better cold start. Um, <clears throat> there's really a, a ton of choices for Coyote owners today that choose to stay naturally aspirated. In conclusion, once again, your intake manifold choice is really gonna come down to cost and ultimate performance. In my mind, there's really two choices and everything's in between. I'm either gonna go all the way and do the Cobra Jet intake manifold or I'm gonna stick with the 2018 intake, possibly with some porting, and just have a really stock looking, really well performing part in the case of the 2018 manifold. Thanks for watching our Coyote intake manifold shootout. To see more cool videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.